Before we begin, I'd like to quickly give a shout out to the lovely people over at VR.TV, a VR content streaming platform with thousands of videos and interactive experiences available on Oculus devices, HTC Vive, Google Daydream, and more. They are holding a Christmas campaign where you can engage with their curated playlist of videos for the holiday, and should you participate, have a chance to win one of several prizes, including an Oculus Go. Click a link down below in the description to reach their interactive playlist page. Look around and click on the various glowing items to get either more information on that campaign, see a few jokes, or watch some of their videos they've specially chosen for the campaign, including Extravaganza, a Tribeca VR film exclusive to Oculus Rift and Go users. There will be a chance for you to get free access to some of VR's contents in advance for free, so stay tuned to the channel for details in coming videos and posts. Remember, click the link down below in the description to find out more. So, if we have electroencephalograms and head-mounted displays, why don't we have the Nerve Gear already? Asking this question probably means you're pretty new to this stuff, so uh, let's get you up to speed. If there's any idea that I've seen proposed more than any other in the Sorter Online virtual reality community over the past four years, it's the idea of using a virtual reality headset together with an EEG to basically make the nerve gear. I've addressed this directly and indirectly in other videos, but it's still persisting and it's so common, it warrants a video all to itself. Let's start this off by explaining what each device here is, and then get to explaining why the idea of combining them doesn't work out as cleanly as it may first appear. Electroencephalograms, or EEGs for short, are devices that measure the voltage variations that are produced by electrical activity in our brains by placing electrodes on our scalp. These voltage variations are communicated to a receiving device such as a computer to be recorded or used in some other manner. In recent times, they've been used for things such as brain-computer interfaces where electrical activity being read is used to command a computer. Head-mounted displays, or HMDs for short, are, as the name suggests, screens that are placed in front of your eyes, having their focus corrected using lenses, and in the modern era, image generated by computers and adjusted in relation to the orientation of the user's head via the data from internal and external sensors like gyroscopes and tracking cameras. Thanks to improvements in each one of the fundamental components of head-mounted displays, they've reached a point where they can induce a sensation known as presence, where the mind is so convinced the image it is being presented is reality, it subconsciously accepts the virtual world as the real one and begins to behave accordingly. The Nerve Gear is a fictional device from a story called Sorta Online. It immersed users fully inside of a virtual world by stimulating their brains using electromagnetic waves to read brain activity for intents, sending sensory data to present the simulation, and preventing brain signals from reaching their intended location in the body to prevent actuation of one's virtual actions with the real body. When you look at the Nerve Gear and its sister device the Atmosphere from the story, and compare them to the appearance of EEGs and head-mounted displays, it's not hard to see why a first impression would suggest the two in tandem could act just like a Nerve Gear. You use the head-mounted display for immersion while using EEG for inputs. Done, right? Get me that million dollar Kayaba Akihiko salary and that VR harem now, please? Yeah, no. There are several reasons why the solution hasn't worked, and I'll get to the ones that can be somewhat resolved first so we can drill into the more technical stuff in a bit. The first issue here is that neither EEG nor head mounted displays do anything about touch. You can use headphones for sound, just make sure you aren't hungry to deal with taste, and smell is usually ignored by most people anyway. But touch is a pretty core part of our experience of reality. Presence makes us feel like we're in the virtual world, but it could be said that without touch, we are no more than virtual ghosts who aren't genuinely a part of that world. The second one is the simple problem that neither device does anything to stop our motions. So right now, if you try to walk around, you will genuinely walk around and most likely walk straight into a wall, which isn't exactly the kind of thing you want to do while enjoying a virtual reality simulation. Both of these are problems with the clean metaphor of EMG and HMDs working together just like the Nerve Gear, but if you're willing to disregard the form factor, using a VR suit and restraints can resolve both issues without much trouble. I'm even doing so myself with my virtual reality rig, which uses EMGs instead of EEGs. No, the real problem here, and the reason why you don't currently see paraplegics wrecking people in Echo Arena or setting records in Beat Saber, has everything to do with the nature of EEG itself. Like I said, 
All EEG does is read voltage at the location it's placed on the scalp. That's it. It's not analyzing neuron activity itself, delving deep into the skull, or anything fancy like that. This clearly isn't a perfect solution. There are actually problems here because our skulls actually impede the communication of some of the data that we're looking for, as do our hair and even the moisture and salinity of our skin can impact the quality of the data that the electrodes pick up. To make matters even more problematic, our brains aren't 2D surfaces. There are volumes with activity happening both on the surface and inside. Unfortunately, due to the nature of electrical conductivity, the stronger activity that happens near the surface will mostly drown out the data happening deeper in our brains. Then we come to the matter of the data itself. It's mainly just fluctuations or waves of electrical activity. These waves occur in certain frequencies and amplitudes that we've managed to figure out thanks to a lot of studying. But there is something that needs to be understood about these waves. They aren't precise measurements. The activity of individual neurons or brain cells is way too small to be detected by EEGs, and even if they could detect them, the noise of electrical activity produced by other things such as facial muscles, eye movement, and other bodily processes can easily drown them out. As such, the waves being detected are not actually the activity of any one neuron, as they are the data picked up by many neurons that happen to activate all at once around the region that is being measured. By our good fortune, some patterns have actually emerged in these activities, which we've managed to decipher by utilizing very advanced computer algorithms. But these patterns aren't universal here, and we need to calibrate the computers being used to analyze each individual person's brain activity. And even the best of these would be about as nice as playing a video game at 10 or even maybe less than one frame per second. We can hope deep learning technology and better processors can improve our understanding here so that maybe we can improve the speed here and there, but the other issues at play here, the lack of spatial resolution brought about by the signals coming from grouped up electrical activity, basically puts a hard limit on the clarity we can ever achieve using this method. It would likely take processing power superior to that of a human themselves to ever possibly be able to accomplish deciphering human thoughts or intents clearly from this data which puts this cleanly into a post-technological singularity world. Still though, for people who aren't able to do things otherwise, such as paraplegics, a frame per minute is still an upgrade, so we can't really discount the value here. Really, the problem that we are having here is one of marketing. A lot of the headlines that we see in these topics tend to say things like, we can communicate telepathically with each other, head-mounted displays make you feel like you're really there, and Controlling bionic limbs with our minds is here. There's an element of truth to them, really, but at the same time, they're taking something small and really inflating them far beyond what they ever should reasonably be proposed as, and when I look at them that way, they can really just be summed up as clickbait, written by people in the press who lack an understanding of what's really going on here, and are latching onto whatever sounds good to get the most clicks out of people. Seeing as this can actually bring increased budgets if enough interest comes about, even the scientists themselves are incentivized to let misunderstandings persist. But most of the crazy headlines usually have more simple technologies behind them when you finally move on from just trying to understand the basics, which makes the real work done easier to appreciate, but also takes away the magic and lets you more reasonably assess what's going on. EEGs and head mounted displays are both good technologies. They have been used to accomplish many great things but Nerve Gear is the biggest marketing problem of them all here. It is a megalodon shark of a problem that has been dressed up like a sheep. It's going to be way harder to deal with than many people realize, but it can be dealt with. And the sooner my newbies out here can start hitting the books, leveling up, and reaching the front lines, the sooner we'll be able to take down this wolf and enjoy the rest of the game that lies beyond. Thank you very much for watching everybody. If you liked the video, be sure to rate, comment, share, and subscribe in order to help out the channel and support my future endeavors. Also, be sure to check out our Discord server, since it's a nice place where you could possibly meet up with other like-minded folks and individuals who are interested in the same stuff. Well then everybody, that just about does it here. Thank you very much for watching this video. Till next time, this has been Gregory, logging out.